The interesting thing with the spending portion of fiscal policy, let's say that the potential GDP, we'll put this as the mark, potential GDP was uh, 600 million. But the economy was actually making a real GDP of only 500 million. That means that this economy is in what type of problem? Recession. Recession. And the difference between the actual GDP and potential GDP is going to be called the GDP gap. It's the gap that exists between what you potentially should be making and what you're actually making. If you were achieving potential GDP, then the GDP gap would be zero. But in this economy, what is the GDP gap? Is how much? 100 million. So there's a 100 million GDP gap. If the government was going to use fiscal policy, and the part of fiscal policy they were going to use was to only increase government spending, then it seems by logic that they would have to increase spending by how much to get the economy to go to potential? By 100 million. That's what it seems like. But there's something magic that happens in the economy called the multiplier effect. And the nice thing with this is that you don't have to spend as a government 100 million to close 100 million GDP gap. And this is the way it works. If the government spent, let's say, $20, as an example, if they spent $20 and they bought this crazy gun, <laughs> I don't know what it is, some crazy gun, all right, Operate, operated by a guy in a yellow suit. <laughs> yeah, for $20. That's pretty good, right? This guy in a yellow suit is going to earn the $20. And when he earns the $20, what do people tend to do with money they get? They spend it. So this $20 is going to be an increase in government spending, which is going to increase AD. But it's going to lead to, then, this person getting 20 bucks and spending it. But do people spend all of the money that they get? No, they tend to save some of it also. So let's say that this person then saves $2 and then spends the rest. They spend $18. Well, that's an $18 increase in consumption. So that's going to increase GDP. And whatever they buy, let's say they buy some shoes. So he buys yellow suit dude, buy some shoes for his suit, right? And that is a spending of $18. The um, what is his name? Al Bundy is going to get the money and going to save some and then spend the rest and buy, I don't know, some groceries or something. I don't know what gross, some lettuce. And then the grocery store owner is going to get the money and then save some, spend the rest. Next level, save some, spend the rest. And it's going to continue on and on and on and on. So in this and just these transactions, the government spending increased by only $20, but GDP increased by $54.20 in just these rounds. But it's going to be even more because the rounds of consumption spending will continue to go on and on and on. So there is an equation we use to try to make the... the intended increase in GDP, somewhat scientific, so that we can hit our target. The marginal propensity to consume, MPC, marginal propensity to consume, propensity means likelihood. Sometimes they say that certain children have a propensity for violence. Right? A likelihood to commit violent acts, propensity. The marginal propensity to consume means if you gave somebody, an average citizen in your country, 
the, if you gave the average citizen a certain change in their income, what percentage of that change in income would they spend? That's the marginal propensity to consume, and it will be expressed as a decimal. So it's the percentage of any change in income that people tend to spend, but it will always be expressed as a decimal. And then the marginal propensity to save is going to be the percentage of a change in income that people tend to save. It'd be like something like 0 0.9. That, that means that if I gave you $10, you would tend to spend $9 of it and save $10. Is it like based on uh, the quality of items in the market? No. It's based off of a, a tendency within an economy as an aggregate, an as a whole. What is that, that based on the tendency? Based off of cultural beliefs in the United States the marginal propensity to consume is going to be much higher than in Japan. If you give the average American um, some money, <laughs> right, they tend to go out. Victor's laughing because he knows Americans, right? They go out and they're like, woohoo, let's go spend it. On average, when you take the average, um, uh, I don't know, like uh, habits of the American, and say, okay, if we gave everybody a hundred dollar tax cut, now they're keeping a hundred dollars that they thought they were gonna have to give over, so it's like an extra hundred dollars. Of that hundred dollars, how much of it are they gonna go spend? In America, they'll spend a very high percentage of it. In Japan, if Japan pulls the same thing, Japan has had less success with fiscal policy because when you give someone who's Japanese in the Japanese culture, a change in their income, they have a much um, lower likelihood to spend it and they like to save more. There's a high cultural value on saving in Japan and not so much in the United States. <laughs> okay, so let's say that you got a change in your income of $100 then that hundred dollars of that extra hundred, you spend ninety of it. Then the marginal and oh, and you save ten dollars. Then then the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.9, and I put it as 0 0.90. You can add as many zeros as you want after, you know, a number. You know that about decimals. I always put 0 0.90 just as a reinforcement of the idea that that's ninety percent of that change, and the MPS is 0.10. So that means that if the government went out and spent and they bought that gun for the 20 bucks, then according to the MPC, that change in someone's income is going to tell the government how much of that 20 bucks is going to be spent, is going to lead to greater consumption. Oh, here, go back. Sorry, here, I'm back. Good. Questions? Yeah. Does that mean probably government spending is better fiscal policy than just cutting taxes? Yes. Wow. Great. That's good. So the spending multiplier, and if you're a math whiz, you could probably have figured this out with the summation type idea, but the spending multiplier is going to be 1 over MPS. And what that means is that if you take some sort of change in government spending, sorry it's so faint here, this change in government spending, a certain amount times the spending multiplier, it will tell you in total how much total spending is going to change. 
So after you do all the rounds of that initial government spending and then consumption, 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 consumption and you add all that up, this equation will give you the total change then in spending and hopefully lead to whatever the gap was in GDP. What is the M? Pardon? What is the M? A spending multiplier. Okay. Yeah, M sub S. I forgot to make it a sub. It just looks like Ms. But the spending multiplier, M sub S, is 1 over the marginal propensity to save. So the GDP gap, for now dealing with recession problems, the GDP gap is how much potential GDP exceeds actual GDP. But it can also, in demand pole inflation, be thought of uh, as by how much the actual is exceeding the, the potential, basically the desired change in GDP you would want to get to potential. It's positive in recessions and negative in demand pull inflations. Because in demand pull inflation, you want to decrease GDP. The recessionary gap is how much government spending has to change by to close the big old GDP gap. So the, it, the GDP gap in our other economy was 100 million. We know because of the spending multiplier effect that government doesn't have to spend 100 million. The amount they do have to spend to lead then to changes in the economy is called the recessionary gap. So the recessionary gap is the little amount they'd have to spend in a recession to get to potential GDP. The inflationary gap is how much government spending would have to decrease by 